Hey, what's going on guys, Ace here, and today we are going to review the second episode of the second season of Blue Lock. Of course, in addition to the review, we are going to compare it to the manga, see what they added, what they cut, and overall evaluate the pacing. In addition, we will go over the animation, the art style, important things that you might need to focus on, and it goes without saying guys, there will be no spoilers in this video, only hints, so you can understand this show better. And of course, to achieve that, we need to start by answering the question, how much chapters did it actually cover? Ironically, this episode actually covered double the content from the previous. You see, the first episode only covered two chapters, and a little bit. This one, however, covered four, chapter 97, 98, 99, and ended with the end of chapter 100. Which I thought it was really amazing, since it's going to be mostly action, I think the anime will do things much faster. However, we need to see how the pacing went, and how they handled some fast moving moments, for us to judge if this was the right call. But let's start from the top. The episode begins with Isigi pumping himself up, and reciting what the third selection is all about. This works as a quick recap since it's been a week, which I think this was fine as an introduction. Then I actually want to answer something about the opening. A lot of people noted that I did not cover some things in the opening. That actually was intentional, because some things are actually spoilers and I can't really cover them. But in any case, let's get back to the episode, where the character selection scene is practically the same as in the manga. I mean, the art style looks better, but what I found funny, all these scenes of this woman talking actually happen in one panel in the manga since it had a lot of text on it. And honestly, I think this looked much better in the anime. It actually felt like there is some sort of tension, and also the whole 3D animation looked perfect. Also, we get introduced to four new players, Nanasi, Hiyori, and these two players, which you don't really need to care about at all. They're basically fodder, but none of this really matters. What's actually important for us is actually Hiyori, Nanasi, and Isigi's conversation. But before we actually get to it, we need to talk about the art, which looks completely odd, especially with Hiyori. I mean, he always had a weird face in the manga, but man, here it's too apparent. And also, they start doing these PNG type of scenes which really look bad. They look stiff and rigid, as if we read a manga. As for the dialogue, basically, it was them saying we are nice people. It was the same as in the manga, but I really love the cool effects. And also, this scene of Baru, Rin, and Ego looks so much better in the anime, especially with the amazing voice acting. But one thing I noticed is actually that Hiyori is missing his cool-headedness. If you read the manga, you'd understand Hiyori is not just nice, he's actually such a calm, collected character and that's definitely a very important trait to his personality, and so this choice of not focusing on that seems curious to me. And unfortunately, it doesn't end here, because there is one final touch for this scene at the end, which is all about them showing that they have egos, even though they are nice, they are egoists. And I find it very weird that they skip this as well. I don't know, overall I like this scene, but from a narrative perspective, I think they messed it up. Which I gotta say, especially for calm scenes like this, I think the dialogue and personalities need to be on point. But anyways, the following scene of introducing both teams is actually the same as in the manga, and overall it looks great. I mean again, except those PNG scenes that really infuriate me. Couldn't they just animate their hair a little bit? I mean there are plugins and after effects for that, so what the hell they're doing? But I gotta level with you guys. Even though I hated this, it is nothing compared to the start of the game. Immediately two things annoyed me. First, again, the PNG slideshow continues. Come on, this is sports here, they need to be moving, but more importantly, they must up something even bigger, which is Otoya pressing Shido here. Now, first of all, it would have made so much more sense if they have shown us Kunigami against Shido, which would explain why Otoya pressing Shido this quickly is such a huge feat for Otoya. But also, they cut a very crucial scene, which is about Otoya actually moving towards Shido, that looks very fast and out of nowhere, and seems to be taking Shido by surprise and this honestly annoyed me so much. Like, I can almost bear the animation if the pacing is right. However, this really messes it up. Like, we don't even know the context for Otoya's press and why Shiro is shook. But I digress. The next scene of Isigi helping Shido was generally the same, but bad animated as usual. Isigi looks really weird here, and the still images carry on, and honestly, I'm really getting tired of this. But other than that, it's really like the manga. Obviously, because Isigi got the ball, him and Rin playing together was expected, and actually it was animated fairly decent. But in any case, the whole thing with Chigiri bursting into the scene and cutting Isigi and Rin's link up is the same as the manga, and I think it's fine. However, what's not fine is actually them cutting another scene, and another scene that is crucial to the pacing. You see, in the anime, Shido showed up out of nowhere. It seems like all of a sudden he has insane speed. 
However, in the manga there is a scene that shows him slowly creeping in, and so them actually cutting this was really bad. It makes the scene, well, makes no sense. Here he honestly felt like he is teleporting. But in any case, let's talk about something the studio did that is actually smart, which is them refraining from using regular CGI for this scene. Instead, they went for this chess-like style, which honestly is understandable. You see, moving CGI looks weird, especially when close up, and so them choosing to use these pieces instead makes total sense. However, I wish they did not use it here. Any other place it would have been perfect, but here I think this was such a bad choice. You see, it is completely out of place it killed the pacing completely. In the manga, Isigi did not take time to analyze. He sprinted to link up with Shiro immediately and in the same panel, which shows how fast his reaction time is, and actually it's a great feat for his perception, because even a faster player like Chigiri who was even closer to Shido did not react, while Isigi was shown to be reacting. But honestly, because of the CGI chess scene, the anime really killed the momentum for Isigi, and then they had the audacity to use a PNG still frame for this scene of Isigi charging, which if they didn't kill the momentum before, this definitely did it. And I mean the effects and coloring are great, but I need animation here. It was a charge, it was not him looking at Shido. And funny enough, if you thought this is bad, the next scene is actually worse. They used CGI, but it was a still frame. Like what is even the purpose of using CGI if you are going to use a still frame? At this point, why not draw the characters instead of using a 3D model? I understand CGI is used for faster animation scenes, so the studio doesn't take a lot of time and money animating frame by frame, but here it's just infuriating. What's the purpose of CGI here? In any case, let's not dwell on this anymore and actually talk about the goal, which I thought looked amazing. Honestly, Shiro's eyes doing this and the effects, everything worked perfectly and I really like this scene, but not for nothing, I can't forgive them for messing up the pacing. This goal would have been so much more impactful if they just done right by the pacing, which I really can't forgive them for this. In any case, my fury got completely crushed by one thing, hearing Karasu's voice actor. Man, him not being phased at all by Shiro's goal and actually calling him mediocre was such a treat. And honestly, hearing it in the anime made it so much better than in the manga. I mean, in the manga it actually looked like as if it's a small deal. However, in the anime he really looked like he is a game changer, which I definitely appreciated. And surprisingly, when his time came, they actually did him justice production-wise. Especially here, him fishing for Easy because he noticed that he is desperate, and then we actually got a look at his eyes, which was super cool, man. Then we get this amazing shot of him bullying Isiki, and I really liked it. But honestly, it was nothing compared to what was coming next. So when it comes to his dribbles, when the ball is at his feet, they use CGI which doesn't bother me because it's not a whole character. Then when it comes to him pushing Isigi and Shido, they actually hand draw that frame by frame which looked amazing overall. However, we really can't have nice things to the end, because the last scene was really butchered. I mean, what the hell is even this? Karasu looks weird. The image looks stiff, it's a PNG slideshow again, what the hell they're thinking? I don't know man, I don't like this. And also him taunting Isigi and Hiyori interfering, all of this was the same as the manga and it looked nice so I'm not going to cover it. Then we get to Karasu actually cutting off Isigi from Rin. I still hate the use of CGI here, which looks really stiff. However, I really loved him cutting off Rin like this. I think it's a brilliant, non-taxing, quick animation. This kinda makes me think the studio is really doing his best. And honestly, I wouldn't care for the animation if it wasn't for the stupid pacing with them cutting a lot of scenes. But I digress again, because next they actually gave us an anime exclusive scene, when Isigi was understanding Karasu's weapons, and I honestly really love this addition. And also when we talk about the studio doing their best, I feel like they are caring about Karasu a lot here, which he definitely deserves it. But enough of Karasu, it's time for the ninja. You see, after three players pressed Karasu, he did not dribble past them but actually passed the ball next to Ren, who Otoya had him taken completely by surprise. And also, this style of animation for Otoya's movements is a bit weird. You see, I kinda like it but at the same time I hate it. I hate it because of the low frame rate, but also love it because it really looks like he is super fast. Then we get the assassin and the ninja scene, which looks cool. I mean, I loved it in the anime far better than the manga, especially the voice acting of Karasu and Otoya who are roasting each other. Following this, we actually get a very important scene with Hiyori copying Isiki and the latter realizing that he has amazing passing, which by the way is very important later on. But then man, look at this. 
Rin goes and shows everyone why he is number one. Because what he did next, him hiding his shot between Shido and Chigori was actually such a great move. No, 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 scratch that. This move was not great, it was world shattering technique that he actually seems to have pulled off through instinct. Which I know I'm saying a world shattering technique without stating what it is, because it will be explained I think in season 4, and you will understand how big of a brain move this is. And honestly, I absolutely love this art style they used for it. The whole thing blacking out, and it's looking kinda teal, kinda like Irene's aura, and then him shooting and scoring without the goalkeeper even realizing what happened. Everything worked to perfection. And so, overall, I really love this scene. And mind you, they took their sweet time with this, they flushed it out so much. Much. In the manga, this whole thing was in 3 pages, however here they really did it justice. And as I was watching this, I thought this was amazing, however what came next was even more amazing. I'm talking about Chigiri's sprint. The whole thing leading to Isiki and Chigiri thinking of a breakthrough actually is the same as the manga, so I'm going to skip it. What I am going to talk about is actually the pacing of Chigiri's breakthrough. It's so right, and the animation man, it looks super super clean, I mean they use CGI here and there, but overall I didn't mind it at all. It looked amazing, especially here with Chigiri charging like a Dragon Ball Z character. They really treated us with this one. Now talking about Chigiri's breakthrough. Although it was amazing, there were a few scenes that felt odd. First Karasu's cross here. It looked amazing in the manga, however I don't know about copying it for a moving scene in an anime. It just felt weird and kinda doesn't explain what is happening. Then Otoya's breakthrough that matched Chigiri. What's up with the CGI still frames? I just wish they used his previous animation for the breakthrough. It would have looked so much better. Anyways, for the next scene, I want you guys to actually focus on Hiyori a lot. His passing is not just amazing, it's actually close to perfection. But more importantly, his cool-headedness here, he reads the situation slowly, he analyzes, and then he adapts. Which is very crucial information for the U20 game and later for season 4 and 5, so please keep this in mind. And also, I really loved it how Karasu completely killed off Isigi's off-the-ball movement. Which means Isigi will have to adapt to Karasu in order to defeat him here. And honestly, Honestly, I can't wait for that. But more importantly, actually, is Rin and Shido clash, which first of all, I think it was amazing. Shido showing behind Rin like that, scaring him completely, was so much better in the anime than in the manga. In the manga, it honestly felt weird, like why is Rin even shook? But in the anime, it actually was clear, because he came from behind. But also, them crashing here has a great implication for the future, so please guys, keep this in mind as well. And finally, the episode ends with Isiki understanding the clash between Rin and Shido. And actually, figuring out the piece that will lead him to assert himself in this matchup, which means all that is left is for him to think of a way to apply this piece. Now overall, I really did not like the episode. I mean, don't get me wrong, Rin's shot, Chigiri's charge, and Karasu's movements, they all were amazing and they did them justice. However, overall, they really messed this episode up. Not just from an animation perspective, also from the pacing. Them cutting few crucial scenes is really bad, and I really did not like it. And also, when we talk about pacing, we need to talk about how they completely ruined Chido's goal, which I definitely was not happy about. However, with this we are done with the episode review, and as I said, overall, I'm really not happy about it. I think they need to do better. I'm not going to bully the studio or anything, I feel that they are doing their best, and they are smart about it. However, I really wish it was better. Just by a tiny bit, it would have been good and acceptable, however this, hmm, I don't know man. In any case, that's all I've got for you today guys. I really hope you enjoyed the video, and please let me know what do you think of this episode in the comments. With that being said, until next time, thank you for watching.